Python peeps, microcontroller mavens, and newcomers to the Raspberry Pi Pico boards and or CircuitPython. I'm Professor John Gallagher. I'm a university professor teaching physical computing, a class accessible to students new to programming and engineering. And in this lesson, we'll quickly learn to set up a Raspberry Pi Pico W or Pico to work with a fabulous CircuitPython language. We'll install CircuitPython on the board, set up the library files we'll need for the rest of the course, and we'll install Moo, which will allow us to write CircuitPython programs. I use CircuitPython because, although it's very easy to set up and use, it's also very powerful, wildly cross-platform, running on hundreds of boards, very well maintained, and super well supported by the online community. I also love the Raspberry Pi Pico W. It's currently only six bucks in the US. It's a very powerful microcontroller with built-in Wi-Fi, and at some point in the future, it'll support Bluetooth as well. Let's prep that board. Coding awaits. Now to set up CircuitPython on any board, we're gonna need two things. We're gonna need to install a file so that CircuitPython automatically runs on the board when it's started. And once we do that, we'll update CircuitPython with additional libraries that will allow us to use sensors, LED lights, motors, and other components that we'll be using in subsequent lessons in my course. We do that by downloading the CircuitPython libraries that extend the language and choosing the libraries that we'll need and put those on our board. Now we can get both of these things, the CircuitPython setup files and the library files at circuitpython.org. So open a browser and head there now. So to find the CircuitPython file we need to install, click the Downloads tab, then find the board that we need. Now since I'm going to be installing on a Raspberry Pi Pico W, I'll type Pico W into the search box up here. All these boards have Pico W in their name or the name of the firm behind them, but I want this one, Pico W by Raspberry Pi. Now these files are different, so if you're working with a plain Raspberry Pi Pico, not the wireless Pico W, make sure to search for that board. Now my browser says this is a beta version, that's what I'm using at the time that I'm recording this lesson. It's quite possible that you have a later version number here, or even that the current version is no longer in beta, and that's great. That means that an upgrade has been released, so use whichever version shows up first here. Now to put CircuitPython on our board, we we need this .uf2 file, so click Download UF2 now. My browser is configured to ask me where to save this. I'm going to save mine to the desktop. Yours might save to the Downloads folder, but do remember the version number. See how it's version 8 here? That's going to be important when we're downloading our library file, so make sure you remember the version number. We'll need that to choose the right libraries. Now while we have our browser open, let's also download the library files that we need. Just head up here and click on the Libraries tab and scroll down to where you see bundles. Now I said remember the version of CircuitPython that we downloaded. We just downloaded a file that was version 8. So since that's the version that I downloaded, I'm going to make sure that I download the libraries for that version, so I'm going to click on Bundle for version 8. If you downloaded version 9 or a higher number, make sure you click the bundle that matches that version. Once again, my browser asks me where I want to save this file. I'm going to save mine to the desktop. If yours didn't ask you where to save this, it's probably in your Downloads folder. If your files aren't on your desktop, you can drag them out of your Downloads folder and put them on your desktop. If you've got a file that ends in .zip, then you might have to double-click it to unzip it. My browser does this automatically, and if that's the case, you can throw away the zip file. But at this point, you should have two items on your desktop, one ending in .uf2, that's the CircuitPython install file, and another that's a folder, not a file, with a name that starts with Adafruit CircuitPython bundle and your version number, mine's version 8. So now let's install CircuitPython on our Pico board. We do this once to set up the board, and we'll also do it if we ever upgrade the version of CircuitPython. So if we upgrade from a beta version to a release version, or say from version 8 to version 9. So to do this, we're gonna drag over the .uf2 file onto our board, but we only do this when the board shows up on our desktop in bootloader mode. And you'll know that's the case when your board shows up named RPI-RP2. Now to get your board in bootloader mode, first plug your USB cable into your computer. Then on your Pico board, find the button named Boot Cell. Hold that button down while you plug your micro USB cable into your board. Most micro USB cables only go in one way, so make sure you're plugging it in the right way. And you should see a volume mounted on your desktop that says RPI-RP2. That's what you want. You can release the Boot Cell button, but if you don't see RPI-RP2, then unplug your board, hold down Boot Cell, and try plugging your board back in. Do not continue if your board says CircuitPy. That's not bootloader mode. At this point, your board needs to be in bootloader mode. That means it says RPI-RP2. Now once we see that, find the CircuitPython file that you downloaded, that one that ends in .uf2. It likely starts with Adafruit-CircuitPython-the name of your board, so mine starts with Adafruit CircuitPython Raspberry Pi Pico W, and click and drag that UF2 file and drop it in your RPI-RP2 volume. After this copy's over, you'll see RPI-RP2 dismount, it'll go away, and you'll see it remounted with the name CircuitPy. And if so, congratulations, you've just added CircuitPython to your board. 
From now on, whenever you plug in your board, as long as you don't press boot cell, the board should show up with the name CircuitPy. This means that the board is ready to be programmed in CircuitPython. Now before we continue, let's also set up the LIB folder for our board so that it has all of the library extensions for CircuitPython that my students are going to be using with their course. Now the files we need are in the folder that we just downloaded named Adafruit CircuitPython Bundle. So I'm going to go up there and open that up. Now there are examples in here that you can explore on your own if you ever want to see how to use various library files that work with different components. But what we want now is this LIB folder. So open that up, that's where all the libraries are. And there are hundreds of libraries in here. So many that we can't drag them all onto our board, there's not enough space on the board. So we're going to select the ones that we need and copy them to a separate folder that we're going to create named LIB. And then we're going to drag this smaller LIB folder onto our board. So I'll create a new blank LIB folder on my desktop. Since I'm using a Mac, I'll right click or two finger click on my desktop and select new folder. Then I'll rename this folder LIB, all lowercase letters. Very important that it's named exactly like that. If you're a Windows user, I'm gonna assume that you can figure out how to do something similar on your own. And now here is a list of the files and folders that we wanna copy over into this new LIB folder. Now you can just drag them over from this original folder here into the new folder, but that'll move them. And I prefer to copy them so that the files remain in the original folders, but I get a copy in my new folder. And on the Mac, you can make a copy by option dragging a file and dropping it in the new location. So we'll do that now, and I'll read out the names as I drag them over so that you can follow along. Adafruit APDS9960, this is a proximity and gesture sensor. Adafruit bus device, this lets us wire up our Stemma QT devices. We'll use this for a bunch of our sensors and inputs. Adafruit debouncer.mpy, this is for debouncing buttons so that only one press at a time is detected. Adafruit HID, this is for human interface devices so that we can simulate mouse movements and keyboard presses. Adafruit LED animation, this simplifies NeoPixel LED light animations. Adafruit MCP9808.mpy, this is a temperature sensor. Adafruit dash mini MQTT, we'll use this for Wi-Fi Internet of Things projects. You've got to have the Pico W for this. The library doesn't work on the regular Pico because that doesn't have Wi-Fi. Adafruit underscore motors is for working with motors. Adafruit motor kit.mpy is also for working with motors. Adafruit mpr121.mpy is for working with a 12 pad touch sensor. Adafruit requests.mpy will let us access data over the internet that we can use in projects. In tech terms, this will let us make API calls and then parse the JSON that we get back. But if you don't know what that means, don't worry, we're gonna learn in a future lesson. We'll also learn how we can get time, weather, and other data over the internet. Again, this only works with the Pico W because we're using Wi-Fi. Adafruit ticks.mpy is also needed to debounce buttons. Adafruit VL53L1X.mpy is a distance sensor that we use in a future lesson. Neopixel.mpy is for working with NeoPixel lights. And SimpleIO.mpy is used for working with basic input-output devices. There are 15 items in our LIB folder. That's six folders and nine MPY files. And now that we've got all of the libraries that we'll need for our Pico W lessons in this new LIB folder, let's drag the new LIB folder over into our CircuitPy board. You may be asked if you want to replace the existing LIB folder in there. If so, go ahead and replace it. And once that's done, congratulations, we've updated the LIB folder so that we have the appropriate libraries for our version of CircuitPython, and we can continue with more lessons. Now, if you ever upgrade CircuitPython to a new version number, then you'll also download a new set of library folders and copy over the library files and folders that you need. But until then, you shouldn't need to copy over these files unless for some reason your board gets wiped out. Now, I like to keep a backup of these setup files on my computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder called Pico W Setup. You can save this wherever you want. It's a good idea to have these on hand in case you need to quickly reinstall files or you want to set up a new board for another project. Now, very rarely, but it does happen. I've seen boards get flaky and erase files that were on them. So if you've got things handy, you can just copy over your UF2 file when you're in bootloader mode, that RPI-RP2, and then your LIB folder when your CircuitPy volume appears. Now, another thing to be aware of, sometimes boards with the RP2040 chip, and that's the chip that the Pico boards use, get a little bit flaky. In fact, this webpage here on the Adafruit site says, if your Pico board ever gets into a really weird state and doesn't even show up as a disk drive when installing CircuitPython, try installing this Nuke UF2 file, which will do a deep clean of your flash memory. You will lose all files on the board, but at least you'll be able to revive it. 
after nuking reinstall CircuitPython. So I put a URL for this page in the description for this video, and you can follow the nuke instructions to wipe out and reset your board if you ever need that. But if you do that, you'll have to add CircuitPython in bootloader mode again, and then re-add your LIB folder when you're in CircuitPy mode. Now my students are at this point in their course where they've already been working with the Moo editor, they've already got it installed, but if you're new to CircuitPython and you haven't installed the Moo editor, here are the instructions on how to get that free Moo CircuitPython editing software on your computer. So let's get Moo. We'll open up a browser, go to the unusual URL codewith.moo, there's no .com in there, click download. Since I have a Mac, I'm gonna click download under the Mac option. Your browser may save your file to the downloads folder. My browser asks me where I wanna save. I'll select the desktop. Then you can minimize your browser, double click the DMG file, agree to the terms of service. We see some files being installed. You'll see a Moo icon on my desktop, but I'm gonna ignore that icon. Then use this install window to drag the Moo editor icon into the applications folder. That'll copy Moo into the applications folder. And then you can close the finder window and also drag these two icons into the trash. They were used by the installation process. We don't need them anymore. If you open the finder window and click the applications folder, you can now verify that you've indeed got a program called Moo Editor in there. Now I'm also gonna drag a Moo Editor from my applications folder into the dock. Then you can double click to launch Moo. On the Mac, you'll be asked if it's okay to open Moo since it was downloaded from the internet and not the app store. Click open, this is okay. Moo will load. And if you're asked to select the mode, make sure that you select the option that has CircuitPython in it. So nice work, Pythonista. Your board now has CircuitPython installed, loaded with libraries and ready for greatness, and your computer is cooking with Moo. So next up, we'll start coding so that you can start to make something awesome.